Hello everyone. So again, uh, welcome back to the latest lecture session, right? So in the last session, we were uh, discussing the approaches relevant to uh, using the redox potential, right, or reduction potential EH, right? And we discussed the relevant aspects and the analogies uh, with respect to PE, right? And then uh, we discussed the reaction feasibility, right, as in when would the EH cell be uh, positive, right, as in EH1 greater than EH2, only an EH cell is positive, would the delta G then be negative, right? So, for that to occur again, EH1 has to be greater than EH2, uh, meaning that uh, I believe what now, reduction needs to occur at uh, cell 1, right, and uh, oxidation will occur at the cell 2. Reduction at cell 1 meaning cathode, right, at cell 1 and uh, anode at uh, cell 2, right, for the E cell to be uh, positive and thus the delta G to be negative for the reaction to be feasible. And then we talked about uh, relevant aspect as in an imposed potential. So, in, with respect to imposed potential, there are two aspects that we are going to look at, I guess, right. So, let us say if there is a reaction that is thermodynamically favorable, right, but you still want to promote such a thermodynamically favorable uh, reaction, you can again impose uh, external potential to promote this already favorable reaction. And the second case is, let us say there is a reaction that is not thermodynamically favorable now, right, a redox reaction that is not thermodynamically favorable. So, but you want to, uh, you know, get it uh, through or, you know, uh, make that, uh, you know, your, uh, what do we say, the redox reaction that you want to go through, let us say, right, but that is not thermodynamically favorable, right. So, what are you going to do now? So, you are going to impose an, uh, what do we say, external potential, right, so that this particular uh, cell, right, now becomes a feasible, uh, feasible enough for the electron transfer to take place. Without the imposed potential, right, you know, there would be no electron transfer, but because of the imposed or the external potential that you are going to apply, you know, that is going to uh, go through, that as in the redox process is going to go through. So, we are going to cover that aspect now. In this aspect though, it is important to look at, let right, us say, the terminology or I should not say the terminology, I guess, the signs that are applied to this uh, external voltage, I guess. And the reason being, you know, in your applied uh, voltage, let us say, right, or the external voltage that you are, uh, potential that you are applying, pardon me. So, you have the positive terminal and negative terminal. Depending upon to which electrode you connect your positive terminal, right, you are going to have, uh, what do we say, promoting or uh, not promoting your current redox uh, process, right. So, we are going to look at that, right. So, here we have so the ESL is going to be equal to delta EH naught minus RT by NF natural logarithm of Q dash of the overall reaction, right. This is something that we have looked at uh, in the past, right, or in the previous session, pardon me, and that is also equal to EH1 minus EH2 now, right. So, when you apply an uh, what is sectional uh, potential or when we look at the applied uh, potential, so E cell is going to be written as EH1 minus E H 2 minus this applied potential, right. But this particular standard form of using this particular negative term here would be contingent upon your positive terminal, right, being connected to cell 1 now, right, and the negative 1 would then obviously be connected to cell 2, I guess, right. As in what does this mean, uh, negative would be connected to cell 2, right, and positive would be connected to cell 1, and then this would be the relevant, uh, what do we say, symbols or such that you need to use here with the applied uh, voltage or potential. And let us look at what that is, but we are going to understand what this means. What does this mean now? When you are applying what we say positive, to, what we say the positive terminal or connecting the positive terminal to the electrode at cell 1, that means you want to promote oxidation, right, at cell 1, right. And that would obviously mean you would want to then promote reduction at cell 2. So, when you are trying to promote these conditions, right, this particular what we say equation applies and this is the standard way to look at it, I guess. So, we are going to look at it in terms of the cells that we have looked at, let us say. So, electrochemical cell, let us say cell 1 and let us say this, right, 
and you are going to have your cell 2 and let us say this is the direction of your flow of electrons currently now right and uh, what does this mean now uh, usually we have the cathode here right. So, cathode here, but that would then be reduction. So, I need to reverse the flow of the electrons here and this is the anode here right anode here and this would be oxidation right and here I am going to erase that here as in the direction of flow of the electrons. Let us say if the E cell is positive as it is right. Yes, so you are going to have E cell is equal to E 1 minus E 2 right and let us say this particular E cell is uh, positive here. So, when it is positive you know that uh, you will have reduction let us say at cell 1 that means the cathode and oxidation at uh, cell 2 which is the anode here in this case let us say and in this case obviously we do not have any external potential applied now. So, here we are now going to consider in the second case let us say when we apply a external potential now. So, I am going to use the term or the symbol with respect to negative and apply it similar to what we had here right. So, that means my positive terminal now needs to be connected to cell 1 let us say let us see what that entails yes. So, I have my electrode 1 here or cell 1 and cell 2 right and now I am going to put in my external what do we say a voltage let us say or applied voltage here and this is positive and this is the negative uh, terminal and so that is the positive is connected to cell 1 and negative is connected to cell 2 and let me write that as let us say cell 1 and cell 2 right. So, now you know uh, what is going to be promoted now right. So, in general you know here the way you applied this particular uh, terminal or the applied uh, voltage you see that the electron flow from the negative terminal to the cell 2 will be promoted and also electron flow from cell 1 to the positive terminal will be promoted and the electron flow would be within the uh, what do we say applied battery let us say if I can look at that let us say will be from plus to minus and minus to plus outside here right. So, now what am I promoting? I am promoting the flow of electrons from cell 1 to the positive terminal and again electrons from negative terminal to cell 2. So, now if this E applied right the magnitude of it let us say is greater than the magnitude of E 1 minus E 2 right which in this case uh, I am uh, you know assuming that it is going to be. Now, the electron flow is going to be reversed from this case right in the earlier case we had uh, reduction at uh, cell 1, but now as you see here uh, the way we have considered the relevant aspects and connected the relevant terminals we are going to have promotion of oxidation at cell 1 and reduction at cell 2 right. So, now your particular cell 1 is going to be your anode and your cell 2 is going to be equal to your is going to be your cathode right again that is uh, understandable here again. So, again here let us say if you connect it in reverse let us say if you for example, connected your uh, what do we say now negative terminal to your cell 1 and positive terminal to your cell 2 then this would have to be written as or E applied will have to be considered as negative that is uh, you know transforming this particular what do we say uh, variable to be overall positive I guess right. So, the sign or the symbol I guess is remarkably important and that is relevant to the negative symbol is relevant to the positive terminal being connected to cell 1 right. So, that is something that you need to uh, consider here. So, again we will now look at the two aspects that we have considered or talked about earlier as in let us say there is already a thermodynamically favorable uh, reaction let us say redox reaction and you want to further promote that. So, what are you going to do now you are going to see to it that the E applied here is going to be negative here right. So, the E applied mean uh, being negative what does that mean now that you are going to connect your negative terminal to your cell 1 and positive terminal to your cell 2 in this particular example right. And let us say the second case let us say a reaction is thermodynamically not favorable now. So, we want to make that particular reaction thermodynamically favorable right. So, what are you going to do you are going to have an applied voltage or external voltage right and how are you going to have the relevant uh, what do we say. Uh, 
uh, variables are set up such that this equation is going to be right you are going to see to it that the E applied is positive right E applied is positive and greater than in magnitude with respect to the difference of EH1 and EH2 right or it is going to be the difference of uh, what do we say have the opposite sign of delta EH right and what do we say greater than the sum of uh, uh, pardon me greater than delta EH right. So, let me just write that down. So, the second case as in there is a unfavorable reaction right similar to the example we just looked at and you want to make it favorable I guess. So, how do you do that you are going to see to it that you know your E applied let us say is first greater than in magnitude of your delta or let us say I will write it as E1 minus EH1 minus EH2 right and also the symbol that the sign is going to be the opposite of opposite of EH1 minus EH2 right and that is when I guess obviously you are going to promote a redox reaction that is uh, what do we say not favorable and for that case obviously you need to apply higher external voltage and also look at obviously the uh, relevant connections and for that your E applied needs to be a different sign when compared to EH1 uh, minus EH2 right. So, I guess now we are going to go over and uh, look at a particular example right and look at let us say in which case would a particular uh, what we say half reaction or set of two half reactions uh, you know uh, be favorable and let us say when you apply an external voltage of a certain uh, what do we say uh, value how is that going to change right. So, let us look at that now. So, we will have oxygen at 1 bar let us say right keep in mind that usually the partial pressure of O2 is equal to 0 0.21 bar and let us say the pH 7 in this example pH in this example we consider to be 7 let us say and the relevant half reaction we have is oxygen gaseous plus uh, 4 H plus I guess right plus 4 electrons go to 2 H2O and then the reduction potential EH naught standard reduction potential is 1.226 volts let us say for this half reaction this is the data that I have and we are also going to look at a second electrode let us say where 2 H plus plus 2 electrons right can go to H2 and this obviously is your reference or the standard hydrogen electrode right. So, that is why obviously the reference it is obviously set as 1 EH naught is equal to 0 and for let us say for a certain set of conditions we are going to calculate the EH values for both these uh, cases and here too we will consider that H2 is at 1 bar I guess right and let us go ahead and calculate EH1 let us say. So, EH1 is going to be equal to EH1 naught minus again as we know RT by NF natural logarithm of Q dash right that is equal to EH naught is out here 1.226 minus RT by NF let us say here N is the number of electrons being transferred which is 4 right. So, I guess the value of RT at uh, 25 degrees centigrade divided by the Faraday's constant is going to be equal to 0 0.02569 divided by the number of electrons is 4 into natural logarithm of Q dash Q dash right. So, here you have activity of 1 out here right uh, because water activity is 1 divided by activity of uh, or the partial pressure of O2, but in this example we are considering a case when the oxygen is at 1 bar let us say. So, the partial pressure of O2 and that is 1. So, I am going to take that to be 1 here right activity measure measured by partial pressure of uh, O2 here and because the pressure is at 1 that is going to be 1 here and H plus concentration is 10 power minus 7 right raised to the power of 4 right. So, that is why how we have EH1 and that looks like turns out to be 0 0.812 volts right and similarly we are now going to calculate EH2. So, EH2 is going to be equal to E H2 naught minus again R T by N F and what is the value now 0 0.02569 by the number of electrons being transferred which in this case is 2, 2 into natural logarithm of Q dash again. So, partial pressure of 
H2 the gas again we assume that that is going to be equal to 1 bar right. So, again it is 1 here by activity of H plus H plus again because it is at pH 7 it is going to be equal to 10 to the power of minus 7 raised to the power of 2 and looks like with this value is going to be equal to 0 0.414 volts right. So, here let us just summarize what we have you have E H 1 right and that is equal to 0 0.812 volts and E H 2 is going to be equal to 0 minus 0 0.414 volts right. So, here as we see E H 1 is greater than E H 2 right. So, what does that imply now you are going to have reduction right reduction at electrode 1 right or which is now going to be equal to the equivalent to the cathode right and you are going to have oxidation oxidation at 2 or anode right and let us see what this E cell is going to turn out to be. So, E cell is going to be equal to E H 1 minus E H 2 right and the values being 0.812 and 0.812 minus of minus 0.414 right and that is equal to 1.226 volts right. So, again E cell is positive right and that is positive when as we saw now reduction at 1 and oxidation at 2 right. So, what does that mean now? So, O2 plus let us say the balanced half reaction 2 H2 should go to H2O right. This is nothing but from balancing these two off reactions. So, we have this going through as reduction as it is right and then this needs to be uh, oxidation. So, we need to swap this particular half reaction and then multiplying it by 2. So, that the number of electron transfer is same or let me write that down here. So, O2 plus 4 H plus plus 4 electrons right goes to 2 H2O 2 H2O right and the second one I guess is 2 H plus plus 2 electrons goes to H2 right and the gaseous here and gaseous here right. Do we have the right uh, equations? I guess so and now obviously uh, if this proceeds as reduction this reaction will stay as it is if this proceeds as oxidation we need to swap it I guess right. So, and then uh, if you look at that overall reaction right what is it going to be equal to O2 plus 4 H plus plus 4 electrons goes to 2 H2O right and I am going to swap this and multiply it by 2. So, 2 H2 again gas and gas right I will go to 4 H plus plus 4 electrons right and that is going to be nothing but equal to O2 gas plus 2 H2 gas is going to uh, what do we say or you can think of it as obviously oxygen uh, oxidizing hydrogen or hydrogen reducing oxygen right one and the same and forming water right. So, that is what uh, we end up uh, having here right and this was the is the case uh, that we see out there now right. So, now let us say we are going to consider the case let us say if we want to let us say promote the dissociation of water into hydrogen gas and oxygen let us say right if I want to uh, form hydrogen gas let us say. So, what do I do now I need to apply what do we say a uh, uh, external voltage right or look at applied potential here that now needs to be greater than magnitude of 1.226 right and also uh, what it should also be in the opposite sign. Now, let us see what that is I guess right. So, here let us say uh, we are going to have applied potential greater than 1.226 let us choose let us say 1.5 volts to be our E applied right and now how do we apply this we want to see to it that we promote oxidation at 1 right and what does that mean I am going to connect the positive terminal right positive terminal to cell 1 right. So, then I can write the new E cell as E cell dash is equal to E H 1 minus E H 2 minus E applied right and now that is again going to be equal to obviously 0 0.812 minus 0 0.414 right and what do we have that here 
minus 1.5 right and so that is now going to be equal to minus 0 0.274 right. So, what do we see now volts? So, after applying this external uh, what do we say uh, potential right, we now have or we are going to favor the opposite reaction let us say. So, now it is going to be 2 H 2 O dissociating to form oxygen in the gaseous phase and hydrogen right. Again how did we go about that because we applied an external voltage that is greater in magnitude than uh, delta E H I guess right which is 1.5 volts and I guess after applying this particular external voltage now the water is unstable and then it would now dissociate into the relevant uh, what do we say compounds and obviously now at what do we say uh, cell 1 you are going to have uh, uh, now oxidation right meaning anode cell 1 would act as electrode 1 would be the anode and electrode 2 will now be the cathode right again just a minor uh, what do we say uh, uh, reworking based on the relevant applied uh, potential I guess right. So, now we will move on to the uh, next aspect it is going to be the ORP measurements I guess right. So, these are the oxidation reduction potential measurements right. So, here out there let us say you know you have commercially available uh, ORP meters now oxidation reduction potential ORP meters. So, what will they uh, you know uh, help you with let us say right. So, you again this will have a standard electrode or either standard hydrogen electrode or the uh, submerged calomel electrode or reference electrode right and again it is going to measure the potential difference between the standard hydrogen electrode or the standard or the reference electrode. So, with this ORP going to work you are going to have a reference electrode right your standard electrode and it is going to measure the potential difference versus a non reactive electrode let us say a platinum electrode let us say right and then let us say it is going to be able to give you the potential difference between based upon the situation in the water right is it more reduced more oxidized or such and based on that you can approximate your uh, what do we say EH or PE of your solution now. So, in effect ORP the ORP uh, meter will give you an idea about the PE or the EH of your solution now right. So, in general it will help you understand now is it relatively more oxidizing conditions that prevail or relatively more reducing conditions that prevail in your particular solution now and based upon that obviously you can uh, uh, you know tailor that to your needs now right. But you know people think of this uh, ORP measurement as a panacea for uh, that will give you all the information that you need, but there are obviously disadvantages in such generalizations just look at let us look at what they are now. So, keep in mind that ORP reading looks at the solution, so it is not specific not specific let us say to any particular redox couple now right. So, there can be multiple redox couples in the solution obviously right. So, the, o, uh, the ORP meter or this uh, measurement will not look at any particular uh, what we say redox couple it is going to be the cumulative one right or the PE that is existing in the solution now right. So, that is one particular aspect and again the key is that as you know redox disequilibrium usually what we is what predominates. So, if redox disequilibrium predominates what does that mean now let us say you are still you can still have redox process that are going through and let us say the PE can change too right you know you do not have your or the system is not at, at equilibrium. So, possible that your system is not at, at equilibrium right. So, combined with this what is it that we can glean or cannot glean now. So, while you can understand if the solution currently has oxidizing conditions or reducing conditions because the ORP reading is not specific to any couple and is also not what do we say going to uh, tell you if the system is at equilibrium or not let us say right or because you do not know that the kinetics can be slower right. So, what does it mean now it cannot give you any idea about about the speciation let us say of various redox couples present in it present in the solution. right. So, this is an important aspect though. So, while the ORP will give you a generic idea it will obviously not uh, what do we say provide you with the relevant information to be able to understand the speciation of the relevant couples in the uh, solution now right. So, this is one other aspect 
And now we are now going to move on to another uh, what do we say practical aspect with respect to redox process. So this is with respect to corrosion that you would see out there let us say right. So corrosion again what is that now you we can understand that again in terms of an electrochemical cell let us say right. So we are going to look at that now right and we can understand it in terms of an electrochemical cell right. As in what do we have in an electrochemical cell obviously we have a cathode right where we have the reduction taking place, we have an anode right where we have the oxidation taking place right and obviously what else do we need? We need an external circuit, external circuit bridging the gap between or bridging acting as a bridge between the anode and the cathode right. So external circuit now. So in general, uh, you know, when we talk about uh, what do we say, corrosion of metals. So for example, let's say Fe iron in its zero valent zero valent iron, let's say, oxidizing to Fe two plus, let's say, right. So here, anode is your uh, metal, let's say, or the surface of the metal is your anode, right, where the corrosion takes place. Yes. And cathode obviously you know depends upon uh, what is the electron acceptor out there right. So we are going to look at those aspects. So again for corrosion to take place obviously you need your metal uh, surface right which acts as the anode right where you have what do we say the uh, release of the electrons yes or oxidation. And obviously you need a cathode which would accept or you know a place where or a surface where or an electron acceptor I guess yes electrode where we accept it accepts the electron or the relevant reactions there. And then obviously you need an external circuit now. So any of these three aspects if they miss I guess obviously the corrosion would not go through. So we are going to look at what do we say a uh, couple of uh, ways uh, to that corrosion goes through and then look at how we can uh, control corrosion based on what we based on the knowledge that we have I guess. So in general there are two aspects again uh, one would be with respect to when we have dissimilar metals being in contact. So that is one aspect we are going to look at. And obviously the other aspect is when let us say your metal is what do we say in contact with the usual electron acceptors out there and the most usual one obviously is your oxygen and that is the one we usually see out there. But for industrial applications or such even when we have dissimilar metals that is a remarkably important issue I mean dissimilar metals in contact with each other. So we are going to look at these two sets of examples I guess. So the first set obviously is going to be the one when dissimilar metals. are in contact right and so we are going to have an example here. So it is going to be one with iron Fe2 plus plus 2 electrons right and Fe0 and looks like the Pe0 value for this particular half reaction is minus 7.55 and let us also consider another uh, half reaction dissimilar letter let us say copper. Cu2 plus plus 2 electrons right goes to Cu and this particular P0 is equal to 5.74 right. So again here we have uh, the P0 values for two uh, half reactions and let us assume a case when let us say the Fe2 plus and Cu2 plus Cu2 plus concentrations are equal to or activities are equal to 10 power minus 3 and work out the relevant P values and then compare them and see which metal will be oxidized or which metal will be corroded I guess right. So let us look at that. So assuming that all the activities are equal to 10 power minus 3. So the P1 right is going to be equal to P0 minus 7.55 minus 1 by n right and log of what is activity of this particular uh, what we say metal right pure metal. So it is going to be equal to 1 let us say. Uh, and by 10 power minus 3 right and that is going to be equal to 1 by n as in n is 2. So that is going to be equal to 10 power minus 3 1.5 and that is 1.5 that is equal to minus 9.05 right and then the P2 is going to be equal to 5.74 P0 right minus 1 by n is again 1 by 2 and times log of 
activity of 1 again because C not pure metal right by 10 power minus 3 right. So, again 1.5 4.5.74 4 minus 1.5. So, it is 4.24 right. So, from here you see that P 2 is greater than P 1 right P 2 is greater than P e 1 right. So, what does this mean now? So, it means that 2 will proceed as reduction and 1 as oxidation right. So, what does this mean now when the copper and iron are in contact with each other you know 1 is oxidation thus iron will corrode right thus iron will corrode yes. So, obviously, when you want to control such what do we say uh, uh, corrosion due to uh, contact between two dissimilar metals let us say. So, what can you do now right. So, you can have an insulation material between these two uh, dissimilar metals. So, what are you trying to achieve there? So, this insulation means you are cutting down on that external circuit right. So, here we are when we are trying to control corrosion we look at uh, the three aspects anode, cathode and uh, the external circuit. So, when you have dissimilar metals in contact with each other you can have uh, insulating material between each other as in you are preventing the uh, contact between them and thus the transfer of electrons and thus there is not going to be any redox process going through thus there is not going to be any corrosion of your particular metal right or you can also have a sacrificial anode. Let me just list that I guess. So, how can I control it? One would be insulation I guess right insulating material and the other one would be a sacrificial anode. So, you will choose let us say another metal let us say who is so it is something like P e 2 right greater than let us say P e 3 let us say right. You will choose some other metal and that will act as your sacrificial anode thus protecting your particular uh, uh, metal which is iron let us say that you want to uh, see to it that it does not corrode I guess right. So, you are going to pro provide a sacrificial anode rather than iron acting as your or the V metal surface of iron acting as your uh, anode right. So, that is one particular case or you can also people do that rarely I guess in the industries anyway you can have an applied potential right. If you have the applied potential let us say you can see to it that the it is not thermodynamically favorable for this particular not thermodynamically favorable I guess. So, this thermodynamically favorable reaction does not go through because you are applying a external uh, what do we say potential I guess. So, this is one uh, particular way to go about it. So, obviously, we are also going to look at the second type of uh, corrosion right. So, when you have a metal in contact with a soluble oxidant now right. So, when we have the metal in contact with soluble oxidants such as let us say O2, chlorine, HOCl right and CrO4 2 minus let us say right. Uh, then again we can have corrosion. So, obviously, again we can look at what do we see the relevant p values calculating them and so on and go through, but obviously from your background you know that let us say O2 is an oxidizing agent it is an electron acceptor and again Cl2 and HOCl here pardon me right they are again oxidizing agents right. So, what does that mean now that their p value will be relatively high right compared to most uh, the p values of the uh, relevant half reactions uh, relevant to any other metals out there let us say. So, in that case obviously, what would you observe now the P 1 being greater than P 2 right. So, you will have oxidation of your particular metal. So, how can you what do we say uh, see to it that you control such type of uh, what do we say uh, corrosion now right. So, when you have this oxygen let us say dissolved in water uh, let us say that is in contact with your particular uh, metal now right. So, that is the reason why we paint it right again that is an insulating material we again paint it right. So, that we are looking at you know uh, cutting down that external circuit which allows for the transfer of electrons from one half reaction to the other right. So, that is the reason we paint metals let us say right or let us say you know you can also see to it that let us say obviously, depending on the type of metal an initial layer of uh, corrosion leads to formation of again metal oxides let us say. And these metal oxides on the surface are again remarkably resistant to any other what do we say uh, uh, chemical process or transformation and they themselves act as an insulating layer let us say. Or lastly again you can promote formation of let us say an insulating layer. In this case I believe we looked at one particular example in our acid base relevant chemical process right. 
as in we see to it that you know you have a layer of CSCO3 let us say that would precipitate in your distribution network right. So, that would promote let us say or not promote pardon me that will see to it that your what we say the distribution network or the pipeline let us say is not corroded why is it because you have a thin line of uh, your precipitation on your uh, metal here right. So, in such ways you can go ahead and uh, what we say control your relevant uh, corrosion here again two aspects uh, more or less we are looking at. Uh, cutting down or you know breaking that external circuit which acts as the conductor for electrons from one half reaction to the other you know that is again based on the relevant aspects uh, we have looked at here right. So, again uh, with that I guess uh, we are more or less uh, done with today's session and we are going to wrap up the class in next session. So, in the next session I guess we are going to look at a holistic approach right. So, thus far we have looked at uh, equilibrium and kinetics and then looked at the major aspects as in acid base complex formation and uh, precipitation and dissolution and again we looked at redox process. And then as we went through the redox process we also looked at examples that you know gave us a holistic idea now right as in what would the situation be if you looked at the theoretical aspect of just the redox process and then as we approach the uh, true situation that we, we would expect out there in the nature as in uh, redox in conjunction with precipitation and complex formation we saw how the system changes and why the relevant background is necessary in our particular uh, chemical process right. And also throughout the class especially I guess with respect to let us say complex formation let us say our precipitation we looked at let us say even in such simple aspects as coagulation and flocculation why such background is necessary as in is it charge neutralization that is relevant to your particular coagulation and flocculation or is it sweep uh, precipitation or co precipitation now right or sweep flocculation or co precipitation now. Again depending on that you need to choose your relevant uh, coagulant right Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus and so on and so forth right. So, again in the next class we are going to look at it uh, holistically again uh, just a brief uh, review of what we have been up to and I guess then we will uh, wrap up uh, this course and that is it for today and thank you.